Hey guys, welcome to this week's episode. Last weekend we were discussing summer scouting, hanging trail cameras, where to place stands, and we did touch a little bit on mock scrapes, but we didn't really go into detail. So on this week's episode, we'd like to go into detail on what a primary scrape is and what I'm looking for to hang a stand over one. So we'll start out with what a primary scrape is. Primary scrape is gonna be the licking vine or the branch. It's gonna be a communal site the deer are gonna use all year round. It's not going to be something that they just hit or pull out a couple times during the rut. So they're going to come through, they're going to hit these licking vines, they're going to deposit scent whether they're using their foreheads or preorbital glands, they're going to be, bucks will be rubbing their antlers on it. So they're going to come through, they're going to let other deer know they're in the area. Bucks are going to use it for multiple different reasons. They're going to let younger, less mature bucks know that they're in the area. They're also going to use it to let does know they're in the area during pre-rut and rut and they just communicate all year round by using these. So what I like to do is when I find an area where there's a primary scrape, I like to hang a camera over it and that's one, it's going to tell me it's a primary scrape because does, fawns, and bucks are all hitting it. If I just get an occasional deer hitting it once in a blue moon, that's not a primary scrape. So once I know it's a primary scrape, I want to know can I hang a stand over this spot and is it easy access for me to get in and out, creating a high odds area to harvest the deer. Most of my stand locations are over a primary scrape or near a primary scrape. Whether that be in a bedding area, a transition route, or a food source like this food plot here that we're in, um, there's a food source to the left, food source to the right, and it all pinches right behind the camera here. So what I'm doing with this scrape is I'm trying to get the deer as it's coming through to stop, maybe spend a couple seconds here, my redneck box blind's about 25 yards from this spot, and it's gonna give me a better shot opportunity. By using primary scrapes in your food plots, you're enhancing the chances of you being able to harvest a deer. Now guys, when it comes to making a primary scrape in an area that doesn't already have a pre-existing scrape or licking vine or licking branch that they're using, what you need to look for is a high odds area where deer are traveling at least the majority of the time through your property. And what that's going to do is it's going to increase the chances of them hitting this spot. So I started using synthetic vines about five years ago. I used to use real vines, but these seem to last a little bit better in weather. So once I find a travel route that deer are hitting nonstop, I go ahead, I hang this vine up. I'll move a little bit of the dirt around underneath of it, either with a rake or I'll just use my foot. And then as far as scents go, I'm not a huge scent person. These scrape fix vines, they do come with a little synthetic powder that you can put on the ground or put on the vine as an attractant. And I will use them at the very beginning, but after deer start hitting these things, it's best to just leave them alone. Deer are gonna deposit real scent and they're gonna be used more often if you just leave these areas alone. This primary scrape right here, this is already an active one. So really, I'm not gonna be touching this vine. I don't even really wanna get in the dirt here. We are in the summertime, so it's not as bad as if I came through here during like October, late October, November, uh, we'd really be disturbing this spot. But primary scrapes are, are going to be close to bedding areas, transition routes, and like hidey hole food plots like this one we're in right now. Um, they will hit field edges, but most of the time those are just pass-throughs. They're going to hit it once or twice just to let a doe know they're in the area, or maybe they're getting worked up during the rut. But really the primary scrape, it's not so much the scrape that I'm looking for, it's the licking branch. So rather that be you make a licking vine by using a real vine or a synthetic vine or a low hanging oak tree limb. So guys, why would I want to make one of these? Why would I want to enhance an area by using a scrape? Because this is one thing that is going to be consistent throughout the whole season. Food plots come and go, their attractiveness comes at certain times of the year. Um, as far as like bedding areas, they use them, you know, in certain times, dependent on weather, dependent on wind. Same with transition routes, pinch points, things like that. By hanging up a licking vine in areas that are high odds areas, you're increasing the chances that you get a deer, especially a mature buck, to stop in those spots. And it's just enhancing your hunt. You spend all this time improving habitat, whether that's making clear cuts, putting in food plots, um, hanging good stands, making travel routes, all the work that you put in, the best thing you can do is once you finish doing all your habitat improvements, 
then start hanging up these mock scrapes in areas to enhance your shot opportunity. And it's just making everything come together. And I've noticed over the years that I have far more success hunting over mock scrapes than I do probably anything else in the timber. Um, food plots are great, I love them, but if I can throw a mock scrape up on the edge of a food plot that's close to my deer stand and make that deer hang around for a couple more seconds, it's increased my shot opportunities and it's increased my success overall. So if you guys haven't already started making mock scrapes or hanging stands over primary scrapes, I highly suggest you do it. Deer are gonna be using this all year round and there's no bad time to make them. It doesn't matter if it's the heat of summer, go ahead and start looking for areas or use past intel that you have on deer coming through areas and try hanging one of these up over a trail that you know bucks consistently hit and I guarantee you'll have success this season. Guys, give Mock Scrapes a try. We really enjoy using them. Thanks for tuning in on this week's episode. If you haven't already, hit that subscribe button. We'll be back next weekend.